Greetings! Welcome to the devlog for experimental build 4 of update 111 of hot dogs, horseshoes, and hand grenades. We're going to start as always with a quick sound check. Make sure speakers aren't up too high. Wonderful. So what have we got for you this week? Well, I have been continuing to truck along on our new level, and this week's big focus came towards entities. And what I mean by entities is both destructible props that are going into the level, uh, as well as some of what are called constructs. Constructs are a new addition to take and hold that is almost like the take phases version of encryptions. Some of them are threats and hazards. Some of them are tools. Some of them are more passive and some of them sort of span uh, multiple categories. So we're going to take a look at a couple of them today with our trusty 1911. Cool. So we actually have two on screen here. I'm going to show this one first. This is one of our new moving entities. This is called a Sentinel. This is my solution, my rendition of doing something akin to a security camera. Security cameras are a tricky thing to handle in games. Um, if you want to sort of mix in some stealth to your stealth action for a number of common design reasons. One of the big ones is actually informing the player ahead of time before they perform an action, where the camera can see, what the camera can see, when the camera is going to see the player. A lot of games do this with cones, but as much as you can visually see them, games like Metal Gear Solid and things like that are often relying you to line yourself up relative to a mini map to even really see the exact extent, because when we're viewing a cone from the side, it can be a little difficult to tell where the vision begins and ends. Other games can use cool rendering tricks where they do like an intersection outline of where the cone is. I can't do a lot of the cool uh, rendering tricks that are typically done for that because this game is forward rendered. Uh, and any of you who do graphic stuff will understand what I'm talking about. The rest of you are like, those are just words. But suffice to say, I can't do a bunch of the things that I would like to do if I wanted to use a solid cone. And so instead, I came upon the idea of actually doing them closer to the way certain types of actual vision systems work. And that this is, the, what, what we're seeing here as a visual effect is a one-to-one -one for the actual sight rays that this entity has, which collide with the environment. They're stopped by various environment objects, both static and dynamic. But if any of those strike any of my colliders as a player, uh, it will detect me and that will raise alarm. And alarm is a system that is going to be coming to the new take and hold level, which I'll talk about once it's more put together and I have some audio hooks to show off. But Sentinels here are sort of like dynamic sight system. Obviously, we don't want to get too close. And I basically tried to make it a large enough cone that even if you're playing as a teleport player, there's some measure of risk here to getting around this, similar to as if you were running fast. So it may behoove you to wait around a corner for it to pass, hide behind a prop, or just chance it by trying to, say, run real fast and jump over the sides here. There's a number of ways to deal with it. You will also be able to shoot them apart. Right now, it just has a temp damage profile, so I'll be able to just take this apart with a couple pistol shots. It's got separate panels on the outside, which will be more armored eventually, and then a core, which we can just take apart like so. As I said, that's all just tempt in right now. Uh, Joe, our composer and sound designer, is working on cool sounds for those. They're just not in yet. So that is our Sentinel. The next, actually, conveniently, there's one here, is our floaters. This is a new type of mine uh, that I'm trying out in game, and I don't know if they'll actually be quite effective enough, um, but instead of doing the traditional sort of thing where there's a proximity mine, you get too close, it triggers, which once again can be this fuzzy, ambiguous thing where you don't, where you perform an action and an entity in the game doesn't necessarily respond predictably. Um, the, the idea with these is that these are touch detonated, almost like an underwater naval mine. And if you actually just shoot pretty much any of the plates, I don't know if the pistol's actually strong enough to do it, the rifle will, uh, the mine actually moves towards damage. So if you just try to spray at this with, a, with an SMG or a rifle uh, to destroy it, it may come barreling towards you. 
But if you can, let's see if we can actually do it. If you can actually hit that tiny part in the center with a bullet. Oh, you can set it off. Whew, I was just far enough away from that. Moments when you're backing up and you're like, oh, that wall's a little closer than I thought it was. So yeah, still working on the exact damage and the damage radius uh, for that. Um, but the whole thing, once again, I want to create a sort of proximity mine that you have to be aware of. But if you happen to run into it, strike it with a weapon, strike it with a casing coming out of your gun, uh, you can set them off. Um, but you could also theoretically, by, by the fact that they sort of chase where they've been damaged, use that to reposition them into a more advantageous position for a chain reaction you want to set off. Um, it's really one of the things I'm trying to do is make it so that a bunch of these elements aren't just hazards, but in the right context can also be tools. So speaking of tools, we have the third entity in here. These are called nodes. And this is, uh, honestly, I'm not even sure what was going through my head when I initially worked on this, but I wanted to make something that was static, could be in a bunch of different circumstances, but had a fun interaction that would be useful whether or not, like regardless of which take and hold character you were playing. And so the way these work, and let's see, can we find a better, a better oriented one. I might reset the scene actually, just for aesthetic reasons. Okay, we are back in here. Yeah, that's better. I'm gonna grab the Sosig spawner so that we can see this one in action. Spawn a poor disabled Ah, if we, we we should we should give the Sosig a little de dignity, at least give it some clothing. We are on camera after all. Boop. And so the way these basically work, let me actually make sure my play space is clear behind me. It is, is that this is basically a interactive catapult. So we can pull this around like so. We can aim it and then release it. And it shot vaporizes targets. I'm still working on it, having it have the correct amount of damage against props and explodables. It is variable currently, um, but the projectile doesn't bounce. It's, from this angle, I don't think there's anything interesting to hit. Can we hit? No, no, we can't hit there. Oh, that is so much fun, and I love that sound. So you can pull it back pretty far, actually. And that is a significantly higher damage shot against, it va auto vaporizes Sosigs, but against other sorts of things like destructibles and such, it does a good deal more damage uh, that way. Very cool. Oh shoot, we're gonna miss the Sentinel. Run fast. Yeah, we're not gonna make it. Do, 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 do. So yeah, so I have set these up. These, a few of these spawn in the scene. I may try to find slightly more fun places to put them in the scene. That is a blast. So yeah, so that is our node. And then the fourth one, I can just leave that there actually. Let's find our quickest way into an underground area and find one of them. The Sentinel is not the only passive type of security. Here's another one. These are just called blisters and they f exact same sort of thing. You have a one-to-one -one relationship of the beams that you see and the device seeing you. And so for something like this, obviously we just have to time it right and dodge around it to not get hit by it. I wanna have passive security like this. The whole point is that it isn't this like big obstruction that slows your run down and makes you go like, oh, now I have to deal with this. It's simply a thing you have to be aware of and time getting past so that traversal is more engaging and you can't just sort of like autopilot your way through things. So yeah, do, 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 go around here. Wonderful. And of course, if you need to, you can just blow those up, but that will likely trigger same alert as though you had in fact been hit by one of the beams. That is back down here. Wonderful. 
So yeah, the, 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 the other thing that sort of came along with these this week hasn't just been working on these entities, but working on the way that the game actually populates them into the scene. Uh, and this is actually what took a pretty tremendous amount of work. Past scenes in H3 where I've had specialized entities like this have functioned entirely on single manually placed spawn positions, which as you might imagine is quite labor intensive and also means that things end up being exactly in the same spot every single time, um, even if it's just a subset reduction of those spaces, like there's 40 spaces and something spawns in 20 of them. A whole bunch of these entities are spawning in a more sophisticated multi-pass way, where I essentially can define an entire volume, like part of this hallway here, and be like, I want one of those some percentage of the time somewhere in this volume, but that could end up being there, at the end there, at the end here, all over the place. Um, and I'll be able to do that with a whole bunch of both props and hazards and things. Speaking of props, just I know a whole bunch of you can never get enough things that can be smashed. So although these aren't the most interesting looking things on the planet, I have been working on a couple other sort of like decorative plinths uh, that will be in the scene. As you can see, this is our, our, our brutalist uh, hot dog horseshoe and hand grenade. And just for good luck, I put did a hamburger and a chicken wing as well, just to be funny. Come on, smash. There we go. Blammo. Takes a couple hits. So these, these all break. Um, this was also an experiment in, there's a number of destructibles in this scene that are multi-tier, meaning that this is a base here, and there is the tree and the... Uh, you know, tree air quotes, and then it's pot in air quotes. And we can shatter these separately. If I hit this enough times, and that this is still solid after that, I can do the same here. Same here. But if we actually take out the lower part first, the other destructibles become live physics objects, but can still be smashed. Etc. So that was a system that has a bunch of edge cases because the different pieces need to be aware of each other. Um, the statues are built in a very similar way. So I'm still in the process of making it so that I can have that type of complex assemblage and still say spawn it as an FER object, which means it can go into a spawner, which means that you could put it in your own scenes. You could use it in a target range in a mod scene, what have you. So that is something that I'm working on for to basically make it so that if you enjoy the these environmental destructibles, you can use them in context other than this scene once I have them finished. Let's see if we actually fixed the damage profile on this darn thing. Two, there we go. That's how easy that should break. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Ah, ooh, perfectly lined up shot. So that is what I've got for you folks this week. Uh, this, this build, this is all available today to play in the institution preview scene. Let me know if you run into any weird bugs or if anything breaks or what have you. And uh, I hope you enjoy playing with my wibbly balls. <laughs> I'm so sorry for that. Yo. So that's what's in this week's update. As I said, I'm just laser focused on the level and its content and its new systems that are coming right now. I've got a whole bunch more of these various sorts of constructs planned uh, that are just not quite ready to show yet, but have bits and pieces of them built. And once they're all done, and once the sort of spawning systems have been fully tuned in, a number of them will also probably make their way into the item spawner or possibly some tool to spawn them. Because as you can see, some of them are pretty big. So if you were to try to spawn like the Sentinel in a scene that the ceiling wasn't high enough for, it would just completely freak out and break. So obviously I need an elegant way to handle that. Um, but but yeah, in, in a big way, <laughs> the way... The way the institution level is evolving is me taking a whole solid second stab at some of the stuff that was interesting to me back a long time ago when I built the take and hold containment scene, which was this juxtaposition or combination of the take and hold rogue like formula and then a bunch of these interesting sort of passive entities that are, are just an, another take, a, a slightly more visually abstract take 
on a lot of very classic stealth action gameplay. For the longest time, the take phase of take and hold has been the less interesting part of it. Like the equipment part of it's fun. Occasionally fighting patrols is fun, but there's not a dead air present in that part of take and hold. And I want to make that more engaging. Um, and I think a big portion of that is making sure that each time you play in each take phase, there's a different generative configuration of things that you can encounter and having a whole bunch of those trigger the, a greater likelihood of getting into fights. So if you want to play the game more stealthily and sneak around and prevent fighting during the take phase, you'll be able to play it that way. But if you also just want to be like, I want to blow every single thing up and I want to be as loud of it about it as possible and just have a way more action packed route on your way to the hold, there'll be a bunch of ways that you can do that. And if you're just the sort of, if you're just a, you know, a, a, a loot gremlin who's like, I'm going to find every exploding barrel that is spawned every single time and then put them in a giant pile and then get all the patrols to attack that place and blow them up, you'll be able to do that too. So... <laughs> Anyway, I, I hope you have fun with the with the stuff that is in this build. If, if any, you run into any really strange behavior or interactions between the two, or if you witness like catastrophic failure in the way one of those entities has spawned, I would really love to know in the bug report section of the Steam forum. It'd be super helpful uh, to me because, as I said, the way a bunch of these are being spawned into the level is trying to be a good deal smarter than I've done things in the past which means all, all proc gen stuff has corner cases that have to be ironed out, and I'm sure these do too. So I will uh, so yeah, have fun, and I'll see you all next week. Peace.